My name is Kazuto Amazawa. I'd like to say that I'm just an average junior in high school with no talent, but actually, I have the ability to read the mind of the girl sitting next to me. <sighs> this is exhausting. And this is the picture from that time. Uta, have you ever been there before? Eh? I don't know that place. Hey, Uta, did you know? Ugh, how can you keep talking to me over and over without getting tired of it? I know what you're trying to do with me. Frankly, I've had enough of you two. Her name is Utaha Ayanogawa. She's known for being the most beautiful girl in our school and for being silent. I don't know how it works, but I can't help hearing her inner voice for some reason. She doesn't usually speak, but she's actually quite chatty inside. I only know this because of my ability. Especially when approached by guys who want to get to know her, she looks calm but makes bitter comments on the inside. Hey, are you listening? Jeez, I'm not interested. Shut up already. I knew you wouldn't talk. You're discreet. Discreet? You're not using the word right. Figures that you use words wrong since you hate studying and just hang out all the time. Exactly. LOL. That's so funny. Here we go again. LOL must be so handy to use everywhere. I seriously don't get their sense of humor. It must be tough, Utaha. You have my sympathy. Gosh, she's doing it again. The guys are kind enough to talk to her, and she's keeping her straight face. She's so annoying. During math class, um, there are a couple of ways to prove identities. The first one is to convert either the right or left side into the other side of the equation. The second one is... At that moment, I could hear Utaha's inner voice. Gosh, I forgot my math textbook. I overslept this morning and forgot to put it in my backpack. Huh? She forgot her textbook? She always prepares her textbooks, notebooks, and pens on the desk before classes start. Unusual things could happen, I guess. Gosh, what am I gonna do? The person in front of me had to answer yesterday, so I'm sure it's my turn today. Wait, her facial expression and her inner voice are not matching. I should help her here. Well, for now, why don't you complete the first question at the bottom? As instructed by our teacher, everyone looked down at their desks and started to work on the question. Meanwhile, I quietly talked to Utaha. Uh, um, Utaha, did you forget your textbook by any chance? Uh, he caught me. Then I'll show you mine. Could he be trying to start a romantic relationship by making me feel like I owe him? But somehow, I feel like he's really worried about me. Well, I'm in a pickle right now. Mm, what should I do? He's never really talked to me before. He seems to be a harmless guy, so maybe I don't have to worry too much. I... I can hear everything in her mind! I'd never thought she'd describe me as harmless. I waited for her response while smiling awkwardly. After a little while, she gave me a slight nod. Here you go. Thanks. Utaha didn't say it out loud, but she dropped her usual straight face and slightly smiled at me. She looked shy, so I smiled at her to let her know it wasn't a big deal. I wonder how he noticed that I'd forgotten my textbook. I don't think he was looking this way. Maybe he sensed something was wrong with me and guessed it somehow. In any case, he was kind to me, so I should thank him, right? Uh, alright. I'll say it. I'm gonna say it, okay? Jeez, I'm so embarrassed. I could hear Utaha's inner voice, so I couldn't focus on the question and was about to faint from embarrassment. But I didn't want her to find out that I could read her mind, so I tried to keep it cool. It's not the time to thank me now, just focus on the question, please! During a lunch break... After all, I couldn't say thank you. Utaha, I completely get how thankful you are already! She's such a polite person. Kazuto is so kind. Oh, my heart is pounding. Whoa, what is she saying? Anyway, my mom's egg omelet is the best. It hits the spot. 
After everything that happened in the morning today, I'm starving. She doesn't show it on her face, but I can tell by her inner voice that she loves her delicious lunch. Phew. What would she have done with the textbook if I hadn't been sitting next to her? She doesn't speak at all and keeps her straight faced, so I don't think anyone would notice when she needs help. Does that mean I was able to give her a hand simply because I could hear her inner voice? If that's the case, it might not be my business, but I should probably keep an eye on her from now on. I made up my mind to do so as I quietly sat and smiled next to Utaha. The next day... That's the gist of this romantic comedy. Seriously, the heroine is so cute! She's always upbeat and cheers up the main character, plus she has this nice curvy body. And she's just awesome! You really like her secondary features, huh? That's a bit different from what I like. What's your type, then? Well, I don't care if a heroine is all over the main character or not, and I want to see some gaps between what she looks like and what she really is. Like, she seems perfect on the outside, but she actually has a flaw. Like, she's clumsy, maybe? Y you mean the time I forgot my math textbook? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I guess I get that too. What about her looks? Oh, come on, do you fall for someone based on their looks? Don't judge me. We're talking about novels here. As for looks, well, I'm not a fan of characters with unconventional hair colors. I prefer naturally lighter colored hair to jet black, and I guess I like long hair. Huh? You don't know the beauty of peach colored hair, do you? It's okay if it's in fantasy, but the real world? No thanks. What the hell? I can't believe you don't get how beautiful peach colored hair is. It seems you and I are incompatible. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, Buddy, our class is about to start. You should go back to your seat. My hair is naturally lighter colored, and it's long. Uh, something doesn't sit right with me. <sighs> what, what is she saying? That comment. Well, I know she's only thinking about it in her mind, but still, she's definitely trying to lead me on. Well, there's no way a pretty girl like her is interested in a guy like me. I won't let her inside my head. I tried to take a deep breath and keep it cool, but my heart didn't stop beating fast. No way. Utaha doesn't think much about me just because we interacted a little bit. But what about me? How do I feel about her? S seriously Oh man, I've fallen in love with Utaha. Alright, Kazuto. See you tomorrow. Yep. Bye. Okay, I should get going too. Hmm? Oh gosh, come on, somebody! Someone is in trouble! I sensed something unusual and rushed towards where the voice was coming from. Uta? Honestly, like, what's the matter with you? Seriously, you're so annoying! You look like you think you deserve all the attention from guys. I, I, I don't think that way at all! Utaha desperately denied it in her mind, but she couldn't say it out loud. She started to look a bit gloomy, but appeared calm at first glance. The two girls became more irritated by how calm she was about the situation. What the? I'm saying your straight face gets on my nerves. Hey, say something! I was waiting to see how things would go, but the situation was getting worse. I took a big, deep breath and... Please! Hurry up! This way! Let's go. Hearing me say that, the two girls thought someone had called a teacher and ran away quickly. Uh, are you okay, Utaha? Uh, why is he here? Y you know, I was just passing by, but I'm glad I was here. The situation was pretty ugly, huh? <sighs> It was impossible to start a conversation with Utaha staying silent, and there was an awkward moment between us. Uh, um, well, you look fine, so I'm gonna get going now. You should probably go home soon. See you. Wait! <sighs> I heard her inner voice, but she'd find out I could read her mind if I stopped there. I kept walking, feeling sorry for her. 
Don't... Uh. Uh, how come you always help me? You, you often notice that I'm in trouble and give me a hand, but... But, um... I never said thank you or anything. I know I have a bad attitude. Why do you help me, Kazuto? Th that... That's... Um... Because... <sighs> but because I like you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Utaha. It, it makes you uncomfortable to hear that I like you, right? No worries. I'll try to stay out of your way. <laughs> Utaha? It was surprising to see her smile as she always keeps her straight face. I couldn't help staring at her with confusion and curiosity. It doesn't make me uncomfortable. It makes me so happy. Eh? And Utaha slowly walked toward me. Eh, um, what's going on? Then, she suddenly pulled me by my tie towards her. As I slightly leaned forward, she whispered in my ear. I... I like you too. Eh? Uh, Utaha? I wanted to see her facial expression when she whispered it and tried to look at her, but she couldn't take it and just ran away. Her cheeks looked red, like a burning fire. I should have been able to read her mind, but I had no idea how she felt about me. I guess I don't have to tell you where our relationship went from there. Uta, who wouldn't speak a word to anyone, started talking a little bit in front of me. Our conversations don't last much, but... Um... It looks nice out today. Yeah. <sighs> uh. Do you want to go to an amusement park with me this coming Sunday? Y yes, I do. I can't wait. And for some reason, I can no longer read Utaha's mind. But it's no inconvenience at all. Why? Because she can finally say how she feels out loud. Phew, I'm tired. It was a bit too much to work 10 days in a row. My name is Suyoshi Amano, and I'm 17 years old. I have had no family in my whole life. I pay for high school with a scholarship and the money I get from my part-time job. I feel like my youth is gonna end while I'm busy with school and work. Please stop! Huh? What's going on? It's so late. Come on, let's hang out. No, I'm busy. I wonder what kind of busy stuff you're doing, walking outside so late. I'm working. Oh? Are you working at a hostess club by any chance? No, I'm a food delivery worker. Then why don't you deliver yourself to my house? I'd be happy to taste ya. Watch out! Uh. Ouch! That hurts! I told you to watch out. You bastard! You did it on purpose! Huh? Oh, please, don't make me the bad guy. What on earth are you guys doing? Dad! What? Is that your dad? What are you yapping about so late? You're interfering with my important human study. I'm gonna use you for my experiments. <laughs> Jeez! Let's not mess with that guy. Run! The weird man creeped out the punks, and they immediately took off. Thank you for saving us. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Hmm? Who are you, young man? This is how I met this peculiar family of a father and daughter. I found out that they lived in the same apartment as I did. It was late, but they asked me to stay for a cup of tea. I reluctantly went inside their apartment room. You saved me there, thanks. I'm so glad I was just passing by. I'm always happy to help. I never knew we lived in the same apartment, though. My name is Inori Shinomiya, and I'm a sophomore in high school. He's my dad. Nice to meet you. My name is Suyoshi Amano. I'm a junior. Were you on the way home from a convenience store earlier? I was coming home from my part-time job. I live alone in this apartment since I have no family. My scholarship and part-time job help with my living expenses, but they're not quite enough. I see. Then, do you want to work here as an assistant? <gasps> assistant? Yeah, be my assistant. 
You know I'm a genius inventor. At the moment, I'm developing a revolutionary invention that will heal people's minds and bring world peace. And if this works, my name will be written in history as the greatest inventor of the century. Now, my invention is in its final stage. Inori sometimes helps me out, but we're still short-staffed. I could use an extra assistant. And he's been saying the same thing since before I was born. My mom was fed up with him and ran away. This is why we don't have enough money and I have to work part-time. I see. I don't know the details of the situation, but I'm interested in being your assistant. Great! The deal's on! Before that, what is my hourly pay? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll give you a completion bonus. I'm going to be a millionaire when my invention is made into a commercial product. Then I'll pay you as much as you want. But I need help now to cover my expenses. Then please move in with us. Huh? Oh, right. If you move out of your room and live with us here, you'll be saving on rent. But wouldn't it be inappropriate that your daughter and I live in the same place? Don't worry, I don't mind at all. In that case, it would help me so much to save on rent. I'd like to work here as a live-in assistant. Perfect! Nice to have you on board, assistant number two. I look forward to working with you. Just like that, I ended up living with the father and daughter together. I attended school during the day, worked part-time after school, and assisted a self-proclaimed genius inventor late at night. And next, I will be using the adamantite as a catalyst to create an electrical reaction in each container made from ceramics and the sacred tree from Uriyama Shrine. Please pour 200 milliliters of vanadium mineral water from the convenience store into each of those containers. We're testing with all kinds of water. I understand. Then, press on! This wooden apartment was built 50 years ago and has two bedrooms. Since Dr. Toma is using an entire bedroom for his work, the three of us were sharing the other bedroom. I'm sorry it's so small. This is the only available space for us to sleep. No worries. I feel bad for you, Inori-san. My dad's been like that since I was born. So, I'm used to him. Aren't you uncomfortable sleeping in the same room with a guy you don't know much about? No, I trust you. A responsible person like you would act with common sense. Am I wrong? I see. You trust me. Of course I do! Or I wouldn't have encouraged you to live here. This might have been the first time that someone said something nice about my personality. I instantly fell in love with Inori-san. One month later, I... I did it! Finally! It's complete! You have no idea how much time, money, and family I sacrificed to finally get here! Yay! Um, excuse me, Inori-san. Oh, sorry. I was so happy. I couldn't help it. Hey, guys, don't flirt in front of me! We're not flirting! Anyway... We're gonna sell this great invention of the century to some major corporations, and we're gonna win a fortune! Therefore, the sacred tree of Oriyama Shrine, known as one of the world's most spiritual places, has a deity that rules over the distribution of water. By the way, a special grade Jujutsu Sorcerer meticulously made the container from that sacred tree by using his domain expansion. Anyways, by using the adamantite and orichalcum as catalysts, we apply a high-powered electrical current to a mixture of vanadium mineral water and a drop of the goddess named Aqua's Tears to cause an electrical reaction. And that's how this extraordinary water is produced. If your company merchandises this invention, it's guaranteed to be a massive success. And with the remarkable effects that I have just described, this invention will make a tremendous contribution to world peace and the falling birth rate. As a result, your company's stock value will skyrocket, which will undoubtedly bring you enormous profits, and moreover... However... It didn't go well again. This was my 21st company. I know I'm still in high school, but I already feel like I'm job hunting. I wonder why it's not working. My presentation is perfect! This invention may be too advanced. People who are familiar with anime and parallel universes may probably understand. Probably ordinary people just don't get it. I'm gonna give this to you. Can you think about a better idea? 
Well, I'm not sure that I can, but I'll keep it for you for now. We were in a tough situation. Huh. How could I tell the world about how good this invention is? Hey, welcome home. I recognize your back. I knew it was you, Siyoshi kun How did the presentation go today? You can probably guess from my facial expression. Oh, was it that bad? The invention is so out of the box that people just don't understand how good it is. What are we gonna do? Hello again. You're pretty as ever. Is he the dude from the other night? What a surprise to see you here. I'm gonna pay you back for the last time, dude. Oh, excuse me, but I don't have my bicycle with me today. Could you come back another time? Huh? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I can't fight without my bicycle. Bicycles are not a weapon. You ride on it. We don't need anything from you, bastard. Just give her to us. <laughs> you said you deliver food, right? Why don't I order you to go? Come here. No way. Inori-san. I figured that I didn't stand a chance against the punks. I immediately splashed some water inside the wooden bottle on them. Yikes! Yikes. What's, What's happening? happening? Your hair is black. Yours too. What happened to your uniform? You look preppy. Hmm? What, what are, are we, we doing, doing here? Let me introduce you to our invention. This water bottle is the invention of Dr. Toma Shinomiya and me. It's called the Holy Water Generator. Once you pour a particular type of mineral water from a convenience store into this bottle, it generates holy water with extraordinary effects. And if you drink or splash yourself with that holy water, your evil mind will disappear, and you'll turn out to be like a saint. I must devote myself to prayer all day long. What on earth am I doing? To the spotless minds of the Holy Mother? Oh Lord, please save the hearts of the unfortunate souls of Mother Earth! If you'll excuse us, we must say our prayers. Good luck with the pursuit of world peace. It was unexpected, but I guess the invention helped us. Oh, what's wrong? You look flushed. Uh, Siyoshi kun I... I like you. Eh? I couldn't tell you because I was being shy, but I don't feel shy anymore for some reason. That's why I thought I had to be honest with myself and tell you that. Um... I want you to be my boyfriend, Siyoshi kun Eh... What? Wow! <gasps> Before we knew it, there were pedestrians around us. The holy water has the effects of removing evil minds and purifying hearts. I like you too, Inori-san. Go out with me. Yes! It turned out that the holy water splashed on us too. With the help of the extraordinary effects, Inori-san and I were able to be honest and find out we share strong feelings for one another. Excuse me, I'm a reporter from Japan newspaper. I was just passing by, but it looked like the situation completely changed after some liquid splashed out of the wooden water bottle. What exactly happened? Would you be willing to interview for us? Sure. I thought it was a great opportunity to advertise the holy water generator. I promoted the invention the best I could. After that... The holy water generator is awesome, isn't it? If my dark mind goes away and my heart is clean, that means someone will find the good in me and my time will finally come. Am I right? We can make crimes disappear with the greatest invention of the century, the Holy Water Generator, and world peace will come true! Soon, the Holy Water Generator caught the attention of people all over the world. It was quickly made into a commercial product and sold worldwide. Dr. Toma Shinomiya became a millionaire in no time. We moved into the penthouse suite of a high-rise condo, and I got a huge paycheck from Dr. Toma. Is Dr. Toma in Washington, D.C. right now? A year ago, I'd never have dreamed that my dad would become so famous that he would be traveling around the world and giving speeches. I don't mean to be rude, but I never thought he was this amazing when I first met him. Well, ever since you started to work with him, he became energetic. He was happy to finally have someone he could talk to on equal terms. Our house gets much happier with you around now. Thank you, Siyoshi. You know, I've lived my whole life all alone. No one has ever praised me for anything, so I'm grateful. I owe you a huge thank you, Siyoshi. After this, I got a much sweeter gift from Inori than the biggest paycheck. Eh? What kind of gift? I'll leave it to your imagination. 
Have you decided on your order? Y yes My heart was pounding so hard that it was about to burst out of my chest. In front of me, like that, the waitress came. She was so beautiful, and her breasts were so big that her chest was about to burst for real. Uh, I'll have breakfast option A, please. Option A. Okay, please wait a moment. I can't believe such a beautiful waitress works at this cafe. My name is Takashi Matsushima. I'm a second year college student and I live near that cafe. She had a neat, elegant face and a slender figure. She also had the most translucent complexion I've ever seen. I was pretty excited. Two weeks before... Hey Takashi, I heard that a new cafe opened near your apartment. Shall we go check it out? No, I found their flyer in my mailbox. Yeah, let's go. I don't have anything else to do right now. When we entered the cafe, there was an older couple at the counter. It was early in the day, so the cafe was sparsely populated. Welcome. Please, come in. I'd like a coffee. Me too. Two hot coffees coming up. Please wait a moment. This cafe has a calm and relaxing atmosphere, and it's only a few minutes walk from my apartment. The coffee was very good. We only had one cup, and they gave us a novelty gift to celebrate their opening. I liked the atmosphere at that cafe so much that I began going there every morning to have my breakfast. Welcome. Are you sure you want breakfast option A again today? Yeah. It's so nice of you to come here every day. Are you a student at Tokyo University? Yeah. I thought you looked smart. I'm flattered. You're welcome. I see you here every morning studying while you have breakfast. Good job. If I come here every morning, I notice that my day goes better. It's good that you wake up early. Give me a minute, I'll get your breakfast ready. The owner naturally came to remember my face. My happy college life started daily at this cafe. On another day... Have you decided on your order? A breakfast option A, please. I was too shy to say anything else to her. That was the only daily contact I had with the super beautiful waitress. Whenever I had free time during the day, I would go to the cafe, sometimes even multiple times a day. The appearance of the beautiful waitress made me restless every time. If only I had the talent to talk to women naturally. I'm just another customer to her. I want to know her name, and I want her to know mine. She was probably at the cafe around 60-70% to 70 of the time. When I didn't find her there, I would get slightly depressed. One year later, I had been going to the cafe every morning and had still not got tired of it. Hmm? She's not here today. What's wrong? Why are you scurrying around? No, nothing. Would you like breakfast option A? Yes, please. I was disappointed, but I took my seat. What? They're moving? In a month? Why? They're going so far away! It can't be... I'll never see her again! It's too far for me to go in the mornings. I wouldn't be able to justify going so far. It might make them suspicious of my intentions. What should I do? The thought process of a wimpy is always negative. Here you go. Oh, you look so pale. Are you okay? Are you feeling sick? No, it's nothing. I don't even remember what that meal tasted like. I didn't feel motivated at all and ended up skipping class. Ah! I should have made a move on her! This is what I get for waiting so long! I have to make the most of my chances before they move. I'm just another customer to her anyway. As long as she doesn't make a scene, if my proposal doesn't work, I probably won't see her again then I might as well make the most of this situation. I decided on my plan. Two days before the store closed... Have you decided what you're gonna order? Breakfast option B, please. Option B... Okay... Um... Yes? This cafe closes in two days. Thank you so much for your support so far. If you'd like to visit the new store, please come by. Okay! Thank you so much for your service. Oh, she's never spoken to me before. I know it was about business, but... That was the closest I had come to having a conversation with her. He ordered the slightly more expensive breakfast option B, and even that didn't lead to more conversation. 
After she had walked off behind the counter, I was on the verge of crying. Why couldn't I have said something cleverer? Dang it! The day before the cafe closed, I went there to have my breakfast. Today is our last day. I know the new place is a long way for you to go, but we'd love to see you again. Would you like breakfast option A? No, I'm going all out today. Uh, breakfast option C. Oh, I'm sorry if I made you feel uncomfortable. This cafe serves lunch too, right? Are you able to deliver lunch to me? Actually, I need to concentrate on writing a report for school. I have to work hard to finish it in time. Well, that's tough. We don't usually offer delivery, but... You live nearby, right? We'll make a special delivery to you just for today. Oh, really? Thank you so much! You've helped us out a lot here, too. I hope you'll come to visit our new store. If you promise to come, we'll deliver lunch. I took my last chance. If the beautiful waitress comes to my door, I plan to tell her everything I'd ever wanted to tell her. If she didn't show up, I'd call it fate and give up. I went back to my apartment with my mind made up. I hadn't gone to class that day. I didn't even really have a report to write. I was nervous all morning. If she comes to the door, I guess I should tell her that I like her first. Or should I invite her to a movie, get to know her, and then tell her that I like her? I've been going over the same questions in my head since last night. I can't think straight. Well, oh, she's here. Uh, I gotta tell her that I like her straight away. Coming! Here's your lunch. I love you! Please go out with me! Uh. Ah, I'm sorry. I must be delusional. I made a mistake. I was so incredibly nervous that I forgot to check who I was talking to. I ended up telling the owner that I liked her. No, are you at the drama club? That was great acting. It'll be $9 for your lunch. I'll come back later for the dishes. So if you leave the house, please leave them just in front of your door. Yeah, uh, sorry. Thank you so much. <sighs> what am I doing? They wouldn't let a young woman deliver food to a young man who lives alone? It should have been obvious to me if I had taken a minute to think about it, but I'm... I ate my lunch in silence. I felt so depressed and had no appetite, but I mechanically shoved it all into my mouth. If only I were a little more to the point, even just to say something a little cleverer. If I had only been a little more... a little more... My life might have been different. Oh no, it's already 3pm? I didn't wash the dishes! I was so shocked that I spent hours sat at the table in a daze. Uh, hello? I'm here to pick up the dishes. Thank you for everything. There she was, the woman that I had wanted to see. Oh! Give her the movie ticket that's on the table! Tell her it's a present! Tell her you'll go with her if she doesn't have anyone to go with! What's wrong? I just came to get the dishes. S sorry I haven't washed the dishes yet. Uh, can you give me a moment? Sure. Sorry to keep you waiting. Thank you so much. Oh, she's leaving. I, I have to say something. Ask her what her name is at least! It's gonna be hard for you to move the cafe, right? My mother and father will be there, and they've hired some movers to help. I'm sure it'll go smoothly. Are those your parents? Yeah, they are. Please drop by the new cafe if you're in the neighborhood. Um, may I ask what your name is? Uh... I'm Takashi Matsushima. Thank you for the food. I'm Lisa Shirakawa, and you're welcome. I couldn't work up the courage to give her the movie ticket. It was hard enough just to ask her what her name was. The fact that I confessed my love to her mother by accident was such a black mark on my reputation. Wow, <sighs> it's already 6pm. Only two more hours till closing. What should I do? Time passed while I was feeling sorry for myself. I should just go for it, even if I make a big mess and it all ends up blowing up in my face. Okay. It's only 7 p.m. I'll make it just in time. I hurried to the cafe, movie ticket in hand. I had been to the cafe twice already that day and had even asked for food to be delivered. 
Showing up again was gonna be weird, but I couldn't worry about that at this point. I opened the cafe door with trepidation. Oh, how was your lunch? It was delicious. Thank you so much. That's good. You can take a seat wherever you like. I sat down, and Lisa came to take my order. Do you know what you'd like to eat? Uh, just a coffee, please. Okay, thank you. I came here on a spur-of-the-moment decision, but I still don't know how I'm gonna give her the movie ticket. Twenty minutes before closing time, I was ready with my last-ditch effort. Luckily, Lisa was nearby. Um, can I borrow some paper and a pen? Is the notepad okay? Yeah. I tore off two sheets from the notepad and started writing. On the first page, I wrote, I'd like to give you a ticket to see a movie. If it's okay, would you please go out with me? I'll be waiting in front of the movie theater in front of the station at 10 a.m. on Sunday. On the second sheet, I wrote, I left this note here on purpose. I mustered up my courage at the last minute, put the note and the movie ticket under my cup, and left the cafe. On the proposed Sunday, I arrived in front of the movie theater earlier than 10 a.m. and waited for Lisa, my anxiety slowly building. Of course, I didn't know if she would come or not. It's 10 a.m. I guess she isn't coming. I'll wait a little longer just in case. I intentionally didn't put my contact information on the note. I wanted to postpone the reality of my rejection for as long as possible. It's already 11 a.m. She's definitely not coming. But something might have happened to her on the way. I'll wait a little longer. It was now midday. Oh, I guess Lisa must have a boyfriend. She must have decided to go out with her boyfriend instead. That's it. Time to forget about Lisa. I'm sorry I'm late. What? Whoa! I've been looking forward to today. What were you looking forward to? This date with me? Yeah, I was so excited that I couldn't sleep last night. So I didn't wake up in time to get ready and meet you. I wanted to dress up nicely since it's our first date. I'm sorry that I arrived so late. I apologize. I didn't expect you to come at all. I really didn't think you would. The day before the cafe closed when my mother came back from delivering your food. She told me that she thought you liked me. I think she likes you because you seem to be very responsible. I've always been curious about you. I always see you studying hard while you eat. I was so eager to see you that I volunteered to collect your dishes, and I was very glad to learn your name. I felt the same way. Would you like to go out with me? Yeah. Finally! I managed to say it. One year later, on the anniversary of our first year together, we were celebrating at Lisa's parents' cafe. I should have written something a little cleverer on that note I left for you. Yeah, your handwriting wasn't very good either. You also didn't write down your contact information, which was a problem. Well, I was afraid of being rejected right away, so I didn't write it down. But I'd like to rewrite my letter now. You can't do that. Why not? I want to keep the original. That note is one of my personal treasures. Lisa smiling like that steals my heart. My name is Shota, and my family runs a French restaurant. My parents took it over from my grandfather. I'm the third generation, and I've recently returned from an apprenticeship abroad. On this particular day, I was meeting my former classmate, Takashi. I hadn't seen him in a long time. He worked as a food editor for a publishing company. There's a woman at work who's interested in you, Shota. She'd like to meet you. Are you up for it? Do you mean, like, a blind date? Maybe just as friends first. She's a beautiful, urban woman who enjoys eating and cooking. Well, if she wants to see me... I was reluctant, but I agreed to meet her as a favor to Takashi. The following week, when I was supposed to meet with the woman... Nice to meet you. I'm Agina. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. 
She was very beautiful, and I could tell she was sophisticated. She had a designer handbag and seemed to know her way around very well. She also enjoyed cooking, so we were able to have a deep conversation about some slightly more difficult to make dishes. We had a great conversation. There's a woman that I work with who's a bit strange. She's obsessed with food and doesn't even notice when I talk to her while she's eating. She eats like a beggar. A uh, beggar? The word beggar caught my attention, but I let it slide. Akina and I began seeing each other more often, sometimes alone, sometimes as part of a group. One day, Takashi came to my restaurant. You and Akina seem to be getting along very well. Are you gonna date her? No, I, I, I don't know yet. I was cautious about going out with her because of my age. I hadn't decided yet. One day, I got a message from Akina. The woman I was talking to you about the other day who's obsessed with food wants to meet you, Shota. Oh, really? She's interested in seeing what kind of kitchen a professional chef cooks in at home. Can we come over and see it? What? To my house? No. I'll give it my best shots. Come over on your day off. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. I felt a little forced, but it was my choice in the end, and I said yes. The following week on their day off, Akina came over to my house with her friend. Nice to meet you. I'm Sana. Sorry to come over to your house before we've even met each other. Wow, that smells good. She reacted immediately to the smell of my cooking. I'd heard she was obsessed with food, so I imagined her to be unhealthy, both physically and mentally. But she was a gorgeous, healthy woman with beautiful skin. And I invited them into my kitchen. Wow, what a nice kitchen! Rich, professional chef's kitchens are so different from ours. This kitchen looks like a fun place to hang out. It looks nice in the daytime with the light streaming in through the window. Well... There were two women in my kitchen who gave me two completely different impressions of themselves. Akina and Sana tried some of my food. Wow, it's so good! I'm so happy! Sana exclaimed in admiration with a happy expression on her face. It's nice to cook for you and see you so happy. It makes me happy too. I'm really honored that you invited us over. She continued eating in silence. Where's this wine from? You're very good at cooking, but you're also very good at choosing the right accompaniments to the meal. Sana was silent, concentrating on eating her food, but she never stopped smiling. It made me feel like I shouldn't talk to her. After the meal, Akina went out onto the balcony to enjoy the view at night. She was drinking a glass of wine on her own. Thank you for the meal. I'll do the dishes. Thank you. That's very helpful of you. Do you cook? Yeah, but just simple home cooking with whatever's left in the fridge. I can't say I'm a professional chef. The word beggar didn't seem to fit Sana's gentle and kind demeanor. I found myself alone in my room with Akina because Sana had to leave as she had something important to do. She's obsessed with food, isn't she? She eats like a beggar. I don't agree. I couldn't understand why she thought Sana looked like a beggar. She ate with passion. I felt out of sync with Akina. The next day, I got a call from Sana at the restaurant. Um, thank you for the food yesterday. I won a pair of tickets to Mouseland. I'd like to thank you for yesterday. Would you like to go with Akina? No way! You should take someone you want to go with. I wasn't in the mood for a date with Akina. I don't have anyone that I want to go with. I'll think of another way to thank you then. Wait! Sana, do you want to go with me? Akina's just my friend. We aren't dating or anything. What? Sana was confused, but we decided to go to Mouseland together. Two weeks later, Sana and I went to Mouseland. Wow, this place is amazing! Everyone is smiling. It's like a dream. When I was with Sana, it felt as though the air around us was like cotton candy, and there were flowers everywhere. It was so relaxing. We went on a lot of rides together and ate a lot of food. Sana looked happy as always. Wow, this is delicious! Eating makes you very happy, doesn't it, Sana? When I see you smile at me like that, I feel energized. 
We had so much fun that the day passed in the blink of an eye. What? Why... why is he with her? I'll buy you a souvenir. What? Are you sure? I expected her to choose a souvenir with one of the Mouseland characters on it. This is the same seaweed that I have in my hometown. I haven't had it for years. It's delicious when you eat it with hot rice. That? <laughs> What's so funny? Why are you laughing? It's delicious. I knew it. I find it soothing to be with you, Sana. I want you to go out with me. Uh, I've had a crush before, but I've never been in a relationship with a man. So this would be my first time. Can we start off as friends? Sure. But one day, I want you to be my special someone. Okay. The next day, Sana was getting some grief at work. Hey, are you dating Shoda? I saw you guys together yesterday. No, he asked me out, but I turned him down because I want to start slowly as friends. What? Why did he choose you? You're not good enough for him! I feel the same way. Then, Akina suddenly appeared at my house. I like you, Shoda. I think you know that already. What do you like about Sana? It's one-sided love at the moment. I feel at home with Sana, and I don't like that you call her a beggar. She's a dirty woman who eats food like a beggar! You know what? She suits you, huh? Akina stormed off. Akina began coming to my restaurant alone for dinner much more often. She'd just imitate Sana, eating food as passionately as she could. I figured she was just trying to get my attention. I was worried about Sana, so I called her. I'm calling about what happened with Akina. Are you okay? I'm getting calls from a private number, but no one speaks when I pick up. It's probably Akina. She's spreading fake rumors about me, but I'm okay. Are you sure you're okay? Can you come to the restaurant tomorrow? Okay. The next day, Sana came to the restaurant on her way home from work. Welcome. Mom, this is my friend, Sana. Nice to meet you. I'm Sana. Today is on me. I'll bring you some nice food. What? Are you sure? Thank you so much. When I brought her the food, she wasted no time and began eating it with a huge smile on her face. Do you like her? You very rarely bring women to the restaurant. Yeah. I want to marry her someday. She looks very happy when she's eating. I knew Akina would be at the restaurant. That's why I told Sana to come over. Sana and I had been friends for six months when I confessed my love to her again. I proposed to her, and we got married. Sana quit her job to help me at the restaurant. Now she's a sales girl. She's a very pure person, and I love her. Shoot! I'm gonna be late! I hope I can make it in time. I'm Tomoharu Masura an ordinary junior in high school. Right now, I'm almost late for school. Whoa! Uh. When I was about to turn at a T intersection, I bumped into someone coming from the other direction. Miss President, I'm sorry, are you okay? Sorry, thanks. After I helped her up, the student council president quickly walked away. <laughs> My soulmate! The person I bumped into was Minori Fumiya, a senior in my high school and the student council president. She's so strict with school rules that she's known as devil president. I didn't know she lived around here. Shoot, I gotta go! The next day, I was on my way to school well ahead of time because of what happened yesterday. That's the T intersection where I bumped into the president yesterday. Whoa! Miss President, that was dangerous! Mission failed! What do you mean by mission failed? Excuse me, but I'm in a rush! Hey, hold on! Please wait! I'm sorry, I can't! Hmm? The President dropped her book! She left without picking it up. The Guide to Falling in Love? 
This book sounds unlike the cult president. But I guess she's a teenage girl after all. Wow, she even uses a bookmark. Is she that interested in love? Well, let's see. How to meet and bond with your soulmate. First, the best way to bond with your soulmate is through direct physical contact. D direct physical contact? Ambush and jump into him? Once you successfully bump into each other, he will undoubtedly notice you? Don't be afraid and approach him every day? Wait, is this book serious? Sounds dangerous. Hmm? Did the president take these words literally? Maybe she thinks bumping into someone means crashing into someone. No, that's impossible. She's so smart. But she said mission failed. She seemed like she was waiting to ambush me. Considering all this, I'm pretty sure she took this book too literally. No way. I don't think she's interested in me that much. Anyway, I should return this book to her. I hurried to school. It's not here! The book is missing! Oh no, what am I gonna do? I must have dropped it on my way here. That means the boy from this morning would have found the book! <laughs> it's too embarrassing if he did! I have to get it back. Well, I know his name and everything, thanks to one of the perks of being the president, but I can't just barge into his classroom. The only way is to wait for him on the street after school. After school that day, I was walking home. Oh, that's the president. What is she doing? Is she trying to... No way! Miss President! D Tomoharu! Huh? How did you know my name? Uh, listen, did you pick up a book this morning? Yes, I did. She ignored my question. Here! Uh. You didn't read anything, did you? Uh, I only checked the page with the bookmark. I found the title, um, interesting. Uh, that was the page I didn't want you to read. Makes sense. N now you know that I'm trying to get to know you. I was right then? I thought it couldn't be. But why me? <laughs> because you're my hero, Tamaharu. Huh? Did I do something? What? We were so young. I don't blame you if you don't remember. Uh, I think the first time we met was in high school. Had we met before that? We don't have to get into that. Anyway, Tamaharu, do you mind doing something for me? What? what is it? I didn't feel comfortable asking anybody for this kind of help before, but you might be the right person. Please educate me! E educate you? On what? I want you to teach me about the outside world. The outside world? My parents never let me go near manga or anime or try the latest fashion or makeup because of their strict discipline. I usually don't get what my classmates are talking about, so I've never joined their conversations or made any friends. That's why I only know my little world and have no idea what the outside world is really like. I think it's naive of you to try to learn about the outside world from manga and anime. But I see your parents are strict, so I guess that's why you're strict with yourself and others. Now that you know about the book, I don't think I need to hide how I feel from you anymore. I can be open with you. So, please! Miss President! Okay, Miss President. You're usually reserved, so I'm thrilled you asked me for help so openly and honestly. If there's anything I can teach you, I'll be happy to help. And please make sure I'm the only guy you can bump into. It's dangerous! The President held my hand so tightly. I found her genuine, as she physically bumped into me because the book encouraged her to make direct physical contact. After that, the president and I began talking about all kinds of things while walking to school together. We talked about popular music, manga, and anime, and sometimes she made my heart beat faster. Tomoharu, I heard that couples hold their hands in a unique way. How do they do it? Um. I'm not familiar with relationship stuff, and I only get information from TV shows and manga. 
but I think you're talking about interlocking fingers. Okay, how do you do it? I'm gonna wrap my fingers around yours. Is that okay? Sure. L like this. Wow. Wow, this is interlocking fingers. I feel embarrassed, probably because I've never done it before. Um, I don't mind holding hands as long as you like, but please feel free to let go of my hand if you want to. Oh, sorry. You can let go now. Okay. Tomoharu, you seem to know a lot of things, even about relationships. Not at all. Like I said earlier, it's all from TV shows and manga. Um, have you ever had a girlfriend? No, never. Yes! I'm gonna be my soulmate's first girlfriend! Minori-senpai, were you not allowed to read romance manga as well? That's right. My parents didn't allow me to read any manga in general. Just so you know, The Guide to Falling in Love is my mother's book. I'm just borrowing it. What? Does your mother read that kind of book? I believe she used to read it to attract my father back in the day. I'm not sure if my parents have ever read manga, but they sure have a prejudice against it. This book may be old, but I always kept it close to me when things were tough, so I carry it in my bag. I can't give it away somehow. If you want, I can lend you some romance manga. I can also give you a few dust jackets, so nobody will know what you're reading. That'll be great! Thank you for being so considerate. Manga teaches us what we don't learn from school. It's like a textbook. And one more question. I remember the book says direct physical contact is the best way to bond with your soulmate and encourages you to ambush and bump into him so he'll notice you and all that. Did you bump into me on purpose? Yes, I did. That was dangerous, and I regret doing that. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, you were trying to meet your soulmate, right? I don't think you can call it destiny if you set it up on purpose, don't you think? <gasps> <laughs> Did you just realize that? Miss President, you're surprisingly clumsy, unlike what you seem to be. Wait, but you could say that I grabbed my destiny with my own hands. Am I a genius or what? Uh, <laughs> uh... What's with the dry laugh? If you say so, Miss President. It became our routine to lend my romance manga to the President. It seemed like we were getting closer every day by exchanging our thoughts on stories. Then, one day... Whoa! It's raining! I don't have an umbrella! Me neither. Let's go to the park over there to hide from the rain. President and I took shelter from the rain inside dome-shaped playground equipment. I hope it'll stop soon. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? Something similar happened when we were kids. Do you remember, Tomoharu? Some kids were playing in the park when the rain suddenly came down, and everyone took shelter here. I don't remember that at all. Were you and I here together? I was hesitant to join other kids playing together in the park. After the rain came down hard, I was soaking wet outside the dome alone and trying to decide if I should go inside or not. She has a beautiful profile. Tomoharu, you were inside the dome, but you jumped out without worrying about getting wet and took my hand to pull me inside. It stayed with me for a very long time. I don't remember any of that. I'm sorry. Oh, it stopped raining. It was just a passing shower. Yeah. We got out of the dome. Achoo! Oh no, you're sneezing. Your uniform must be wet. Would you like to come to my house? It's close, and I can give you a towel. I won't force you if you're not comfortable. Your house? Thanks, if you don't mind. Great, let's go. I don't want you to get sick. That was bad luck. Your bag is wet too. What's the matter? The book must be wet, too. It's all wrinkled. Oh, no. The book meant a lot to you. I'll dry it with a hairdryer. The book was quite old, so I tried drying it out. 
but it did nothing to fix its condition. Thanks for trying, Tomoharu. Sorry it didn't work out. This book was important to me, but I don't mind that it's torn because I won't read it anymore. Even without this book, I know as well as others what it feels like to be in love. Did my romance manga teach you like good textbooks? Yes, and also because I had real life experience. Real life experience? Miss President, are you in love with someone? Yeah. Who's the lucky guy? Each day is fun ever since I'm in love. It doesn't matter if he doesn't like me back. It's sad, but... I don't want to be in love with someone who won't like me back. It's too sad. Tomoharu, I knew you were my type when I first saw you at school. I only thought I'd choose you for a date until I intentionally bumped into you after finding out we shared the same route to school. But everything changed. My feelings for you grew stronger as I spent time with you. I like you, Tomoharu. What do you think of me? I'm flattered. It feels like a dream. Honestly, I was only attracted to your beautiful face at first. But once we started talking, I was drawn to everything about you. From the way you smile at my stories, to your childlike interest and curiosity. <gasps> Interlocking fingers! You know, I freaked out when you said you had real life experience, because I thought you liked someone else. Please don't make me feel anxious again, Minori. You called me Minori. I still have something I want you to teach me. Again? What is it? Please teach me how I can make you happy, Tomoharu. Minori is full of interest and curiosity, which keeps me occupied and excited. I look forward to taking our time going on this journey together. I'm a senior in high school called Shota. On a very cold and snow-dusted evening, I heard some crying coming from a little hill on my way home from school. On that hill was a small pet cemetery. <laughs> hmm? I was curious, so I went up the hill and found a girl crying in front of a grave. <laughs> Did her pet pass away? I couldn't tell if she was crying or if it was from the cold. But the girl was shaking and wouldn't move from her spot. I thought about leaving her alone and going home, but it was very cold. So, um, you can use this if you want. It's very cold. What? Oh, thank you. She accepted my scarf, but looked momentarily puzzled. I was worried about her, so I ran to a convenience store. I bought her some hot tea and a sweet bean bun, and then rushed back to where she was. Here, this is for you. It'll warm you up. What? But... Without knowing what else I could do in that situation, I began to walk away so as to leave her alone. Uh, um... Oh, wait! Your scarf! I could hear her calling out to me from behind, but I left without looking back at her. Four years later, in spring, I had graduated from high school and was working as a salesman for a company in the city. This is Sana. She's joining the company today and she'll be working in human resources. I'm Sana. It's nice to meet you all. She looks so fresh. I wonder if I looked like that before I started working here. I felt nostalgic as I listened to the self-introductions of several new graduates. A welcome party was held that weekend for the new employees. Um, do you remember me? What? Have we met before? You don't remember me? Four years ago, on a snowy day, I was crying in front of a grave and you lent me your scarf. Uh, that was you? I had long forgotten about that happening, but looking back on it, I could see how out of line and naive I was to get involved. I was embarrassed of myself. Thank you so much for your help that day. I wanted to thank you for a long time. It was very nice of you. That day was very cold, wasn't it? I want to return the favor, so please, let me take you out. What? Take me out? I'd rather take you out to congratulate you on finding a job. Let's go get lunch together. 
Sure. Wow, you're energetic. We went out for lunch the next day. I was crying that day because my family's cat had just passed away. When I saw you crying in the snow, I wasn't able to leave you alone. It's a little embarrassing, but... My parents were worried because I came home late. But when I told them about you, they were very impressed that young men like you exist in this world. I'm kind of embarrassed. Since that day, you've been my prince. What? Sana's smiling face made me fall in love with her. She invited me out to dinner a few times, and we started going out together on weekends and holidays. Then, one day, her parents invited me over to their house because they wanted to thank me. Thank you so much for taking care of our daughter. She was very depressed that day that you met because of the death of our cat. Thank you so much for helping her. I was extremely nervous. I hope my daughter isn't bothering you at work. Sana is a quick learner, and she's very witty, so she's been a great help in the office. I'd love to take care of you more, in private. I'm sure I'd be a great girlfriend for you. Huh? I got a kick out of Sana's grinning face. If someone like you became my son-in-law, I'd be a very happy man. I agree. That's an endorsement from my family. Eh? Wait! Am I being set up? Hey, Shoda, what do you think? If it's okay with you, Sana, then it's okay with me. Her big, moist eyes staring up at me made me divulge my feelings. I'm so happy! Sana hugging me in front of her parents excited me a lot. We enjoyed a trouble-free relationship and eventually got married. Then, we were blessed with two daughters, and we were very happy with our lives. Time passed. I turned 40 and Sana 37. Our two daughters were in junior high school. Dad, Mom has collapsed. We're in the hospital now. Come quickly. What? Our happiness wasn't to last forever. Sana had developed breast cancer, and it had spread a lot. Even if she underwent emergency surgery, there was little chance of her survival so we were told to prepare ourselves for the worst. I was blinded by darkness. I left my two daughters in the hospital room and went to my car to cry. Why, Sana? Why is this happening? After a while, my two worried daughters came to my car to look for me. Dad, don't give up. We'll do our best to help Mom, and we'll support you too. Yeah, we shouldn't give up. You guys... You're right. If we give up, it's over. Yeah, get a grip, Dad. No one is allowed to cry in front of Mom. Sorry. Sorry. You guys are better parents than I am. I'll be more careful around her. I was happy to see how mature my daughters were, but that didn't stop me from crying. Seeing them behave so stout-heartedly did strengthen my resolve, though. Sana underwent surgery and recovered enough to be discharged from the hospital. I'm in charge of cooking now. You can relax, Mom. You've got much better at cooking, sis. I can help out too. Thank you so much. You don't need to thank them. We're a family. We need to look out for each other. I tried to be cheerful and hoped that Sana would completely recover from her illness. A year later, Sana seemed to be in good health but we were then devastated again by her latest test results. Her cancer has metallicized to her lungs. Surgery won't help her anymore. She probably only has around six months to live at this point. Oh no, it can't be. You're wrong. D doctor please save her. I was too shocked to cry. We watched Sana grow more and more emaciated by the day and I constantly had to hold back my tears in front of her. Then, one day... Hey, Shoda, I want to go to the hill where we first met. That hill? It brings back a lot of good memories. Okay, let's go together. Sana and I returned to the hill where we first met. This was the place my happiness with you started. 
I missed you so much after that day. Yeah, that day was so cold. Did I make you happy in the end? Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm sorry. I promised I wouldn't cry. You're the one suffering. It's okay, Shoda. It's been hard for you too. Please take care of our girls. Enjoy life, even though I'll be gone. Sana passed away a short time later. Twenty years have passed since that day. My daughters are married, and I have a grandkid that looks exactly like Sana. I still look up at the stars during winter and think of a song that Sana used to sing to me. I love you with all my heart, and I'll shine on you forever, because I love you. I want to see her again someday. Until then, I'll live my life as best I can. For Sauna. <laughs> they say you sleep through the dawn in spring, but I, Haruto Hasegawa, a high school junior, am always sleepy. I could hear the cheers of the students, the scent of flowers carried by the wind. I was in a drowsy state. <gasps> Were you sleeping? I'm Minori Kato, the transfer student. I'm sitting next to you now. I think there'll be a lot of things I'm not used to in this new environment, but nice to meet you. When I woke up, there was a beautiful girl standing in front of me. Judging from her words, she seemed to be the rumored transfer student. I was half asleep, listening to the transfer student's introduction. But from that day on, I feel like someone's watching me. Is it just my imagination? Uh, do you need something? Or is there something you're having trouble with? Nope. Oh, I see. That day, I felt Minori's gaze on me all day long. Well, school's over. Time to go to my part-time job. My school life was pretty bland, with my part-time job being the only thing I looked forward to. Hey, have you been? Huh? Are you talking to me? Yep. You just transferred today, right? That's right. You were napping, so I reintroduced myself just for you. She's getting too close to me for someone I've barely met. Well, I have work, so... Wait! That's it after meeting for the first time in 12 years? Huh? 12 years? It's been a while, hasn't it, Harukun? Harukun? Could it be? I remember being called Harukun. If my memory serves me right, could the transfer student in front of me be someone I used to be close to? <laughs> a bug! I'm scared of bugs! Minori, this is a pill bug, so it's not scary. No way! It's still scary! My memory suddenly came back. M minori That Minori? Jeez, it's so mean not to recognize me. Normally you'd remember after hearing my name, right? But I was dozing off when Minori was introduced as the transfer student, and I was still half asleep when you reintroduced yourself. And also... Also? You've changed so much, I didn't recognize you. I mean, you've become beautiful. Really? I've become beautiful? Yeah. Well, I think we used to play together a lot until we were around five, but then you moved away and disappeared, right? It's been about 12 years since we last met, so it'd be weird if you still looked the same as back then. You still seem as lively as ever. Yeah, but I was lonely without Harukun. It couldn't be helped since it was because of my dad's job. I, I see. You were lonely, huh? Hey, can we talk a bit? Can you walk with me to the bus stop? Yeah. Hey, hey, Harukun, we're getting married soon, right? Marriage? What are you talking about? Don't tell me you don't remember. We promised. What? When? When we were five years old, before I moved away. I clearly remember it. We vowed to share our future together. I don't remember that at all. 
Who takes promises from when we were so young seriously? <laughs> Even if you get mad, it's not my fault. So, Haru-kun, are you going to work after high school graduation or go to college? If you're going to college, marriage will have to wait a bit longer, right? But we can still be a couple. I get that you're a romantic, Minori, but that's too sudden, so no comment for now. What? Haruto knew Minori? Really? They're talking about lovers and marriage and stuff. Oh no, this is getting complicated. Sorry, I have to go to my part-time job now. Wait, Harukun, I'm so shocked that you don't remember our marriage promise. I can't just go along with Minori's wishes without actually wanting it. For now, I'll use my part-time job as an excuse to escape from her with all my might. But I'm glad. At least you didn't forget about my existence. That was my biggest worry before transferring. I'm definitely going to marry Harukun. I didn't know Minori was this positive. My peaceful school life came to an end when Minori transferred in. Harukun, why are you running away? Give me a break! Instead of chasing me around, make some female friends! If a new transfer student just chases a guy around, people will think you're weird! All right, I managed to ditch Minori. Time to clean up. Ta-da! I brought a marriage registration form, Harukun. Let's sit down and talk. I wish you would give it a rest. <laughs> Haruto, come here for a second. My peaceful time of reading manga in my room after returning from school was interrupted. What's the big deal? I was at a good part. Mom, if you need something, just come to me. Hey there. No way. You're kidding, right? You followed me all the way home? I used to come over to play a lot, and I wanted to see Mom's face after such a long time. Mom! I never imagined it would be Minori-chan. I'm so surprised. You've become so beautiful. Mom is beautiful, too. Oh, stop it. Beautiful, you say? No, that's not the point! You should be focusing on the mom part. She should be called Auntie. Minori-chan is the type to work on the outer moats first, huh? Can I live with Harukun after we graduate from high school, mom? Sure, go right ahead. What? Enough is enough! Stop deciding my future without my consent! Seriously, Minori, you're way too intrusive! It's been 12 years since we were five years old. We've both changed a lot since then, right? Yet you keep pushing your feelings on me. Just go home! I'm sorry, I'll go home. Minori stormed out of my house. My mom was surprised, but she doesn't know about our past, so it can't be helped. Since then, Minori stopped talking about marriage and chasing me around. She treats me like any other classmate as if nothing happened. <sighs> What's going on? Lately, she's been sighing a lot. Maybe my anger really got to her. One day, I took a late bus because I had to stay behind for an art assignment. The bus was almost empty. <laughs> huh? Sobbing? <laughs> uh, Minori? It's Minori, right? Why is she crying? Could it be because of me? I couldn't help but worry about her, who's always cheerful and bright. I decided to get off at the same bus stop as her. Minori! Harukun, were you on the bus too? I didn't notice. I was late because I had to stay behind for an art assignment. I was going to the shopping district, but this isn't your usual stop, right? Well, I was really hungry, and I thought I might collapse if I didn't eat something at the convenience store. I'll treat you, so come with me. I'll walk you home. Okay, sure. Was it because of me? You were crying earlier, right? You noticed, but it has nothing to do with you, Harukun. I see. Harukun, you worried about me and got off at a different bus stop. You're so kind. Then why were you crying? My parents are getting a divorce. A divorce? We moved to this area because my mom's parents live here. 
I had been told about the divorce before we moved, but recently I've been thinking a lot about my family memories. I couldn't stop crying on the bus. That's why I was lonely and kept saying weird things to Harukun and chasing you around. I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? Is there any way to stop the divorce? Thank you. I'm happy about your feelings, but it seems like it's already decided. I see. Harukun, you haven't changed. You always help me when I'm in trouble. Well, if someone is crying on the bus, of course I'll be concerned. Yeah, but talking to you has made me feel a little better. Can we go home together after school tomorrow? There's something I want to talk about, but it's already late today. Sure, that's fine. I walked Minori home. The next day after school, Minori and I were at a park where we used to play a lot when we were young. This is the ring you gave me. Wow, you've kept it all this time. I don't want to bring up the marriage thing again. I just wanted to talk about the past. We were playing together in the park the day I got this ring from you, and then... Here, I give this to you, Minori. Wow, a beautiful ring! This is for the bride, and... Yay, yay, a bride! If you get too excited, you might lose it. I learned about rings being a symbol of marriage from a drama my mom was watching back then. My heart raced when Harukun gave me the ring and said bride. I hate to ruin such a romantic memory, but you've got it wrong. Bomber! Uh, no way! It wasn't bride. We were talking about Bright. Bright Candy Store, which we used to visit often. You must have misheard me saying bride when I meant to say I bought the capsule toy from Bright. Uh, was that really it? Besides, I was into action heroes as a kid, so there's no way I'd buy a ring capsule toy. I think I accidentally put my money in the wrong machine. If I were the kind of guy who would do such a thoughtful thing, it wouldn't be strange for me to have a girlfriend by now. You're right. Don't just accept it like that! Then what were my feelings? <laughs> hey, there's no need to cry. I just wanted to cry because so many things have happened. Uh, I see. I feel like we had a lot of moments like this in the past, too. Your intense emotions haven't changed since then. Have you calmed down now? Yeah, it's really horrifying to suddenly push for marriage and chase someone around, isn't it? I'm glad you can think calmly now. I mean, there are steps to these things, right? Friends, then lovers, and marriage usually comes after that. We've only just reunited after 12 years. So, Harukun, will you be friends with someone like me? We were friends more than 12 years ago, weren't we? Despite the gap. Oh, right. Then, 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 is it lovers next? Fine. Lovers. Being with you is fun, after all, and I've come to think that I want to be with you through your sad and happy times from now on. I've been concerned about you since you transferred schools. I'm so happy! Then, 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 can you promise to marry me again? Promise to always be by my side? I can't do that. I can understand why you feel that way since your parents are getting divorced, but... Why? Are you dating me casually? It's not casual. That's why I can't say it. I don't know what the future holds. We might be together forever, or we might be separated again by various factors. There might be problems that we can't do anything about with just our feelings. That's why I can't make such an irresponsible promise. But I promise to be by your side tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. Let's not think too deeply about the future and cherish the time we spend together day by day. Harukun, you're really cool after all. What will we be doing in 10 years? Will the pure Minori who was excited by the capsule toy ring still be smitten with me? I hope so. And I want to be that kind of man. Please give it back. Well, Kana, you draw pictures like this? Hey, everyone, look at this. My name is Kana, and I'm a nerd who loves anime and manga. I was being made fun of in my school. K 
Kana's drawing dirty pictures. Give me that back! You're always by yourself drawing these pictures. You're so naughty. This sucks. It's terrible. You shouldn't do that. Stop behaving like a little kid. Huh? Oh, thank you, Akira. <laughs> it was nothing. He's... He's so cool. He was the lone punk in school. I was in love with him. But a nerd and a punk are too different from each other. So, the first thing I need to do is make a connection. I decided to change myself so that I could make a connection with Akira. The next day... Hey, Kana! What's with your hair? I had a makeover. Hmm, I think it should be easy to make a connection with him now. Starting today, I'll be a punk, but only by appearance. Then, I approached Akira. Akira, do you want to have lunch with me today? Huh? Food always tastes better when you eat with someone, as opposed to eating alone. That won't make it taste any different. I followed him around all day, every day. And even though he called me annoying, I didn't let up. You're really persistent, aren't you? <laughs> I never give up. What do you want with me? What do you mean? You were the only person kind enough to help me, so I want to be friends with you. <laughs> You're weird. The delinquents were watching us from the shadows. Akira, let's eat lunch together. Go and eat by yourself. What? I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Do you think being blonde makes me like you? You're making fun of me. I didn't mean to. You're grossing me out. Don't come near me again. Where is all this coming from all of a sudden? Would Kana please come to the teacher's lounge immediately? You. What's wrong with you lately? With your hair like that? Your parents called the school. Uh... They were wondering if you'd made any bad friends at school. You've been hanging out with Akira lately, haven't you? Did he tell you to do this? No, it's, it's not like that. Akira is kinder to me than anyone else. He was nice to me. Anyway, uh, you get good grades, so stop acting like an idiot. Go back to being a serious student. After that, I had no motivation to do anything. I started to feel depressed. I missed school again. Akira rejected me. My teachers were angry at me. My parents cried because of me. I was forced to change my hair color back to black and was absent from school for three days. I never thought being rejected by someone that you loved would be so hard. He was my first love. It's sadder than seeing your favorite male anime character falling in love with another female character. I don't feel like doing anything. Maybe I'll bake something to make myself feel better. Ugh, I wonder what the best way to recover from a broken heart is. Is someone fighting? Delinquents and nerds really are the opposite types of personalities. I've never really interacted with any. Only Akira. And he isn't scary to me. But... It's probably best to not get involved. What? I found Akira alone and surrounded by delinquents. Today's the day that I get even for everything you've done. You can't win this fight on your own, so don't get carried away. You can't fight me one-on-one, -on -one, can you? Which one of you is the most scared? You are! No way! There's no way he can beat that many people! I stood in front of the delinquents, desperate to try and save Akira. What the heck are you doing? Don't... don't fight! Is this Akira's girl? What on earth are you doing? I called the cops! Shut up! That just means we have to take care of you guys before the cops get here! <laughs> <coughs> Whoa! 
Uh, what is this? Akira, let's run! What the? Uh, 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 we, we've made it far enough now, haven't we? Are you stalking me? No, I, I just happened to see you on my way home from shopping. You're such an idiot. If you hang around me, you'll end up getting in a fight one day. I've been purposely keeping my distance from you. Oh yeah? How kind of you. Shut up. And you threw flour at those delinquents. <laughs> so stupid. I was on my way home from the supermarket. I went to buy flour so I could make icing cookies in the shape of my favorite anime characters. But then I saw you, and I was desperate to save you. You shouldn't have gotten involved. It was none of your business. I love you, Akira. I'll do anything for you. You're a bit crazy, aren't you? I know. When a nerd falls in love with someone, they go for it 100%! I continued chasing Akira, and we began eating meals and going to and from school together. Your hair looks better like this than blonde. What? I like it better. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That was the moment a tsundere person became dede, right? Say it again so I can record the audio on my cell phone. Shut up! I'll never say it again! Our love story together had just begun, and I was so happy!